I'm frequently asked, how do I know what to ask for and how much to ask for when meeting with a donor? Well, stay tuned. The answer is coming up. I can remember my first owner meeting like it was yesterday. My wife and I were 24 years old and had just joined our nonprofit. We were trying to raise the necessary funds to cover our salary. We invited two co-workers to dinner to challenge them to make a monthly financial investment. But we lacked any training whatsoever, training we would eventually get and which I'm going to share with you in a second. We paid for a nice three-course meal skirting around the subject of money due to the awkward nature of the topic. I can remember dropping them off at their apartment complex and just as they started to get out of the car, I stated, you wouldn't want to support our work, would you? And with that, the door slammed shut and they were gone. My wife and I just sat there stunned, feeling like utter failures and wondering what we'd done wrong. Well, I'm happy to say six months later, we had our full salary raised, but it's because we were trained to ask and we followed these principles. Principle number one, compile a list of suspects and prospects. Whether you're just starting a nonprofit and raising money for the first time, or if you've been doing this for quite some time, it always helps to start with a list of possible funding candidates. I refer to this process as name storming, compiling a list from any source imaginable. This process includes names on your iPhone, iPad, or PDA. Any name that's in your device is fair game. Then begin to add to that list from other sources, church directories, social clubs like Rotary or Kiwanis, neighbors and neighborhood associations, and even business acquaintances. Principle number two, contact the person to meet. Nothing beats picking up the phone and setting up an appointment to meet. But in this day and age, it's not always easy to get someone on the phone unless you have a cell number or are close friends with that person. It's not wrong to email or even text to get a meeting with someone, but it does depend on the closeness of the relationship. Oftentimes, people want to know what the meeting is about, so be prepared to give them a broad overview of the discussion, but don't give them too much that they decide there's no need to meet with you. Give them an excuse to get together, like sharing some photos or pictures of what you're doing or that are related to your cause. Let them know that you're part of a nonprofit and that you're sharing with individuals who you believe are interested in hearing the exciting work of your nonprofit and how you can work together. If you don't know them well or if you got their name from a referral, say John and Mary Jones thought you might be interested in hearing the exciting work we're doing. Be sure to solidify a date, time, and location to meet and not leave it up in the air. Always direct towards closure, leaving nothing open-ended. Principle number three, craft your elevator speech. All of us have heard the term elevator speech, but having a concise story, an opportunity for involvement that can be told in three to five minutes or expanded to 20 minutes is essential. Sometimes you're only given a short time with the person. Sometimes situations change and your meeting is cut short, or sometimes the person has more time to meet than planned and tells you to continue explaining your cause, and hopefully that's because you've piqued their interest. A good speech includes your story or the story of your organization. Business coach and strategist Mike Kim uses three questions similar to this. What makes you angry? What breaks your heart? And what's the big problem you're trying to solve? Then explain what methods or strategies you employ to solve the problem. Be sure to use an example of a specific person whose life was changed for the better using your methods. And lastly, present an opportunity for them to be involved in solving the problem and start with their financial involvement. But be prepared to flex based on the individual's interests and desires. The biggest mistakes that's made is that nonprofit leaders try to force their problem solution down the throat of others without determining if the person has a similar passion or problem. Principle number four, do your homework. Before meeting with the individual or couple, find out what interests they have by checking with mutual friends and acquaintances, especially if those friends are somehow related to your organization. Board members or current donors understand your desire to secure a gift and need for further involvement from the prospective partner. They can oftentimes tell you ways to get to know the person better, their interests and desires, conversation topics to avoid, and potholes to serve away from. 
The friend or acquaintance can also give you perspective on the capability of the person to give at a specific dollar range or even at a specific amount. Certainly, if the two friends work at the same law firm or play golf together, there, there probably is some indication of how much the other person makes for income. Or if the prospect has some notoriety, you might be able to get an idea of their income or assets from Facebook, LinkedIn, or even Instagram. Or simply Google their name and see what you can find out. I Googled a major donor just yesterday and was shocked at how much I learned. Certainly, you can get a value of the person's home by using Zillow. Both purchasing price and current Zestimate. Principle number five, meet with the person. It's important that you're always mindful of the needs of the person are sensitive to their time commitments. Be sure to arrive early and never stay longer than the allotted time. That's extremely rude. The only exception is if they ask you to stay longer. Be sure to listen more than you talk. I've mentioned that in many of my videos, but be certain to heed my warning. Start with probing questions about the person's background and interest in your cause. Look for similar interests and desires and especially if what's important to them intersects with your mission and vision in some ways. After sharing your story, include the problems, strategies, and methods. Be sure to specifically ask the person questions. Did what I explained resonate with you? Check for understanding, but also passion and interest is vital. If the person is far off in their beliefs or feelings about the problem, they aren't going to even consider giving. If they're tracking with you, proceed the opportunity for involvement. If they aren't, find out if they might be interested in another one of your projects or programs. Again, find that intersection where their interests meet your mission. Then share specifically how they can help and use the interests and a specific dollar amount or range you determine from your research. Remember, it's not wrong to err on a number higher than their capacity. What you don't want is to underchallenge anyone. Sometimes a smaller amount won't excite someone. People want to make a difference with their gift. Wait for their response and close with an appropriate response. Like, thank you or I'm sorry you can't help at this time, when would be a better time, or I apologize if I've inconvenienced you or wasted your time. Determine someone's interest and capacity to give is critical to the success of asking any potential donor. Do your homework and utilize any resource, relationships, technology, and associations to get the information you need. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below if you feel better about making an appeal in person as a result of this video. Or if you still have anxiety, let me know that as well. If you want to know more about the subject of asking, watch this video now. If you aren't already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell and hit all to be notified regularly when the next video is released. Just know that the more you practice, the better you'll get at asking. Don't avoid the lessons you'll learn from a difficult conversation. But know that I'll always be here to help if you need me. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you. See you in the next video.